Hi, I'm Dave from Notes and Volts, and in this episode, we'll take a look at reading MIDI CC messages with an Arduino. As a demonstration, we'll build this little MIDI light show and control it with recording software. MIDI CC stands for Continuous Controller. It's also sometimes referred to as Control Change. MIDI CC messages are used for things that aren't covered by MIDI standard note on, pitch bend, aftertouch, or program change messages. On most MIDI equipment, any knob, button, or pedal can be controlled with a MIDI CC command. Each control is assigned a unique number for identification there are a total of 128 numbers that can be assigned. Many of these control numbers are reserved for special functions. Search online for MIDI CC and you'll find a complete list. Since our light show doesn't really fall into any of these categories, we'll use some numbers that are listed as not defined. For the six lights, I use numbers 22 to 27 since they fall nicely into this group. Now we're ready to start building. First, you'll need to watch my video on building a MIDI input circuit. To go there, click on the screen or check the link in the video description. Next, you need to download and install the Arduino MIDI library as described in the MIDI input test video. Before we continue, let's talk about what we're trying to accomplish with this project. We're going to connect six LEDs to the Arduino board and make them controllable by MIDI CC messages. This is a simple demonstration, but can potentially be scaled up to control things like motors, servos, or even full-size stage lights. Now let's take a look at the Arduino board. You'll notice that some of the pins on the right side have a little mark beside them. This mark shows that these pins are capable of PWM or pulse width modulation. We're going to use PWM to vary the brightness of the LEDs. In pulse width modulation, the Arduino sends a series of pulses that vary between 0 volts and 5 volts out of each pin. These pulses will cause the LED to flash on and off but this happens so quickly that your eye cannot detect the individual flashes. By changing or modulating the length of the on pulses, we can make the LED look like it's getting brighter or dimmer. Now we'll take a look at the software for this project. Visit notesandvolts.com to download this MIDI CC input program. The link is in the video description. If you've been following my MIDI for the Arduino series, a lot of this will look familiar. We start with the include MIDI.h command, which simply adds the MIDI library to our project. Next, we'll use define commands to give names to the six Arduino PWM pins. Now we'll use the MIDI create default instance command to initialize the MIDI library with default settings. This brings us to the Arduino setup function. The MIDI.begin command starts the MIDI library. The parameter MIDI channel omni tells the program to listen to all MIDI channels. If we change this to a number two, it would only respond to messages on MIDI channel two. The next command MIDI.setHandle control change tells the MIDI library what function I want the program to call when a MIDI control change message comes in. I chose the name MyCC function, but you could really call it anything you like. We're now at the main loop function. This is the function that will loop over and over again as long as the program is running. The only command in this function is MIDI.read, which will continuously check for incoming MIDI data. This brings us to the function that's going to do all the work, the MyCC function that we named earlier. 
Whenever the MIDI library detects an incoming MIDI CC message, it will call this function. The MIDI library will pass three numbers to the function. The channel number of the MIDI message, the controller ID number, and the value of that controller. We're simply going to use a switch statement to assign MIDI controller numbers 22 to 27 to the six individual LEDs. As an example, let's pretend a MIDI CC message comes in on controller ID 23. The switch statement will trigger case 23 and run that command. Inside case 23 is an analog write command. This command will send a PWM signal to the pin we defined as LED PWM2. We also have to send a value to the pin to let the Arduino know how bright we want the LED. Zero is off and 255 is full brightness. We'll use the MIDI CC value parameter as our number. The MIDI CC value number has a maximum range of zero to 127. So we'll multiply this number by two to make sure we get the full range of brightness from our LED. Now connect the Arduino board to your computer and upload the program. Make sure you disconnect any cables from the Arduino's RX and TX pins when you do this. Now that we've finished the MIDI input circuit, installed the MIDI library and programmed the Arduino board, we can take a look at installing the LEDs. The LED has a positive and negative side and you have to connect it the right way for it to work. When you look at the LED, one of the legs will be longer than the other. This long leg marks the positive side of the LED, which is known as the anode. The negative lead is called the cathode and it's marked by a flat spot on the body of the LED. You can use any standard LED for this project, but I decided to use a bright blue model I picked up from Adafruit. Here's how we'll wire up each LED. First, we'll wire up the positive lead of each LED to a PWM pin. We'll then connect the negative side of the LED to a 220 ohm resistor. Finally, we'll connect the other side of the resistor to one of the Arduino's ground pins. Okay, so let's start wiring. Notice how I'm using the 220 ohm resistor to connect the negative leg of the LED to the ground rail. The positive leg of the LED is in the hole to the right. I'm arranging them in a circular pattern to make it look a little interesting. Now that all the parts are in place, we just need to wire it up to the Arduino. We'll start by using a wire to connect the breadboard's positive rail with the Arduino's plus five volt pin. We'll run a second wire from the breadboard's ground rail to the Arduino's ground pin marked GND. Now we'll connect the breadboard's lower ground rail to the upper ground rail using a piece of wire. To complete the MIDI connection, we'll run a wire from the optocoupler's pin 6 to the RX pin on the Arduino. Finally, we'll run a wire from the positive leg of each LED to a PWM pin on the Arduino. This shows the Arduino pin numbers that my LEDs are connected to. Once you've finished all the wiring, power up the Arduino with a USB cable. Now connect a MIDI cable from your computer's MIDI interface to the breadboard socket. Now comes the fun part. We can open up our recording software and create a light show. I'm using Logic Pro 9, but you should be able to use any software that outputs MIDI CC commands through your MIDI interface. First, create a new external MIDI track. Make sure the software is set up to output this track to your MIDI interface. 
I'll rename the track light so we remember what it does. Next, you want to open the automation lane for your track. In Logic, you press the A key. Now we'll configure this track to output to controller number 22. Create five more lanes and set these to control numbers 23 to 27. Now by clicking inside the track, we can create some automation points. This line represents the value of controller 22. If we set it to zero, the light will be off. And as we move it up, the light gets brighter. So let's create a quick ramp from zero brightness to full brightness, and then bring it down to zero. We'll duplicate this on each LED so they light up in sequence. Now press the play button and you should see the lights following the automation on the screen. If this works for you, congratulations, you finished the project. To end the video, I programmed a little synchronized light show to music. As always, visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials and until next time, go make some noise.